Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. Matthew 7, beginning with verse 1. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word in the minds and hearts of his people every time we hear it. Will you join me in prayer, please? Let's pray together. God, move in this place. Open our hearts and minds to the truth that transforms. Do your work in our lives. In preparation for communion, in communion, and after communion, do your work in our lives. We love you and we open our minds and hearts to you, to the searching of your Holy Spirit. And we pray it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As always, the sheet is in the worship folder that has the outline of the message and a place to fill in blanks and take notes. Uh, if that's helpful, please take it out and follow along. The words that go in the blanks on the sheet will be on the screens throughout the message. Um, it has been a while since we've had a really good old-fashioned groaner, so I got one this morning. Here we go. Be ready. Uh, a man appeared before a judge in the court, and the judge said, State your name, your occupation, and the charges against you. The man said, My name is Sparks. I'm an electrician. And the charge is battery. To which the judge said, Bailiff, put that man in a dry cell. <laughs> I was pretty positive that the reaction to that was going to be negative this morning. Okay, okay, I'll quit. When Jesus said, do not judge, I don't believe he was talking about a court of law. I believe he was talking about our hearts. Today we begin the summer series, You Asked For It, and the request for this week's message came from Leslie Stepler. Leslie said this, why are we so unforgiving, especially when Jesus laid down his life to forgive us all? How can we serve God in his image without judgment? Jesus spoke about judgment, not only here, but several other times as well. And here in Matthew 7, Jesus begins in verse 1 by telling us to judge is to invite judgment into our own lives. To judge is to invite judgment. Do not judge or you too will be judged. I don't know about you, but that right there, just this one verse, ought to make us stop and think before we pull out the judgment artillery and go blasting away at other people for all the wrongs in their lives. Do not judge, lest you too be judged. To have a heart of mercy rather than a heart of judgment is to be Christ-like. So Jesus says to judge is to invite judgment. Then Jesus goes on and says, God uses the same measure we use. Verse 2, for in the same way you judge others, you will be judged, and the measure you use, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And so, if our hearts are filled with mercy and the way we interact with people is to show mercy and compassion to them, the same measure we use will be used to us by God and we will be shown even more and even greater and even deeper mercy from Him. And if the measure we use in dealing with other people is a heart of judgment and put down and writing them off, and believing they're worth nothing because they don't agree with me, 
then the same measure we use in dealing with others is the measure God will use in dealing with us. I brought this morning to, to, to illustrate what Jesus says here about measures, a bucket and a thimble. I realize if you're way in the back or way up in the balcony, it's hard to see the thimble. That's the point. Because you see, friends, here's the deal. With the mercy of God shown to our lives, we want God to pour out mercy in buckets full. And we want God to pour out judgment to us only in a little bit, only using a thimble as a measure of judgment. We want a bucket full of mercy and a thimble full of judgment. And praise be to God. That's exactly what Jesus promises us if we come to him in repentance. Mercy. Buckets full of mercy. As far as the east is from the west, so I will remove your transgressions from you. Mercy. Yes, that's exactly what God gives us when we come to him. But do we turn around and use the measure in the opposite way when it comes to judgment and other people? Do we give other people a thimble full of mercy and buckets full of judgment? Jesus is saying, if that's the way we live our lives, the measure we use, if the, if the judgment that comes out from us is by the bucket full, then that's the measure God's going to use in our lives. He's going to hold us accountable. And if the judgment we pour out to other people is only a thimble full, that's all that God will have to do to judge us on our judgmentalism. Sometimes, dear friends, we reverse the measure. In the next verse, Jesus talks about specks and logs or a plank. Specks and logs. Verses 3 to 5. Why do you look at a speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time you have a plank, a log, in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. I don't know why it is but I know it is, that it's far easier to see and call out the shortcomings of others than it is to admit our own. Look at the way they discipline their children. That's way too harsh. You ever find yourself thinking that, if not saying it out loud, at a restaurant or in a, in a store when you see parents interacting with their children? Have you ever had it said about you? You must be a really bad sinner. You chew and spit. Okay, that one we don't get so often, right? We have this way of minimizing our own shortcomings and failures while calling out the shortcomings and failures of others. Because you see, when it comes to us, what we say is, come on, cut me some slack. I'm doing the best I can. Have you said that? Have you said that to your spouse? Have you said that to a friend? Have you said that to someone who gets on your case a little bit? Yeah, you'd get drunk too if you had my problems. Yeah. Cut me some slack. Jesus says to watch out about this. He said, what's in your own eye is a log, not a speck. And so, comparing our sins with others is never helpful, it is never holy, it is never productive. It's not a good thing. It's not right because it leads us to hypocrisy. Well, at least I didn't. I don't know about you, but I have, I have thought that to myself and defended myself at least inwardly, if not outwardly, with people who are upset with me, with my wife. All right, you're pointing out this failure in my life. Yes, I'm a failure there, but at least I didn't steal money. At least I didn't 
commit adultery. At least I didn't abuse a child. And comparing my sin with someone else's sin is looking at the speck in their eye when I have a log in my own eye, a a plank in my own eye. And Jesus says this striking thing at the end of these three verses. First, take the plank out of your eye, and then you'll see clearly to help take the speck out of your brother's eye. How do we take the plank out of our own eye? Repentance. Repentance. It's a good, old-fashioned, biblical word. We repent. See, repentance is more than confession. Confession says, God... I'm being judgmental here. Please forgive me. Repentance says, God, I'm being judgmental here. Please forgive me and help me turn from that and live in mercy. And that's the difference. Oh, Lord God, give me a heart like Jesus. Oh, Lord God, help me have compassion like Jesus has had for me. Oh, Lord God, give me a heart of redemption that seeks to build people up and not put them down like Jesus has done for me. Give me thimbles full of judgment and buckets full of mercy because that's what I long to have from you. And so I must give it to another. There's another place where Jesus talks about uh, having received mercy and granting mercy to others, and it's, it's very powerful. It is the story that Jesus told of the unforgiving servant. A servant owed his master multiple talents of gold, way more money than a servant could ever make in a lifetime to pay back. No, we, Jesus doesn't tell us. It's, un, it's unbelievable that a servant would even be that far in debt to his master that is that, that he could have done anything or borrowed anything to be that far in debt. It would, this was a mound of debt that he could never pay back. And the master was ready to have him thrown into jail to work it off for the rest of his life because it would take more than a lifetime to work it off on prison wages because he was just done with him. And a servant, Jesus says, begs for mercy. Give me a little more time and I'll pay it back. And the The master knew the servant was either deluded or lying because he could never pay it back in all of his life. A little more time wasn't going to change anything. But in mercy, the master forgave the debt. He didn't just give the servant a little more time. He forgave the debt. Jesus said, the servant went out from his master and found a fellow servant who owed him a couple of denarii, uh, uh, 10 bucks, five bucks. And he had him prosecuted and he had him thrown into jail in order to pay him back the five bucks that the guy owed him when he had just been forgiven a mountain of debt by his master. And when the master heard about it, he was irate with his servant. He called him back in. He restored the debt. I don't even know how he did that because in a court of law in America, that would never fly. But he restored the debt and had the servant thrown into prison because he did not show a merciful heart after he had received such mercy. And so Jesus says, Freely you have received, freely give. The same mercy that you have received, lavish it out toward others. And Jesus not only taught that, he lived it out. He stood, hung on the cross and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Here's what I know. Some of the most judgmental and critical people I know have known in my life don't know that they're being judgmental and critical. That's not their self-awareness at all. The self-awareness is, I'm right. I'm righteous. I'm holy. I'm biblical. I know the right thing to do here and you're not doing it. The self-awareness is not self-awareness as critical and judgmental. The self-awareness is I'm holy and I'm, I'm holding up righteous standards. 
And some, some of the most judgmental and critical people I have ever met do not see themselves that way at all. And it got me to thinking about the Febreze commercials about being nose blind. I come in the room and I don't smell anything. My guests come in the room and the couch smells like a giant litter box to them because I'm nose blind, right? You've had this experience. My father could not smell the cigarette smoke that was constantly around his body and in our house. He was nose blind to it. Anybody could smell it who came in who didn't smoke, but my father couldn't smell it. Dear friends, sometimes we can't smell our own stink. And so we judge. We're critical. We don't extend mercy. We don't give people a break. Because at least I don't. And we missed it. And dear friends, Jesus wants us to do better. Now listen, showing mercy instead of judgment does not mean that we stop judging what's right and wrong, that we, that we don't have judgments about morality. It doesn't mean that morality doesn't count. It doesn't mean anything goes. It doesn't mean there is no right and wrong. It doesn't mean any of those things. It's not about the rightness and wrongness. It's about the judgmentalism toward people that takes their wrong action and, and we begin to look down our nose at them or we begin to write them off or we begin to believe they are evil in some way. We begin to ascribe the worst motivation we can to their lives because they don't do what I would do. And it's not about whether what they're doing is right or wrong. It's about what my heart is doing with them. That's what Jesus is getting at when he says, judge not, so you won't be judged. Judge not, or you will be judged too. So this morning, as we transition, as we come to Holy Communion, I would like to suggest that Leslie's final question, which was, how can we serve God in his image without judging? I, I suggest that it begins with a prayer for moving the measure from the bucket to the thimble, from buckets full of judgment to a thimble full of judgment. And that prayer begins like this, Jesus, show me my own black heart. I don't want to be nose blind. I don't want to not smell my own stink. Show me my own black heart. Show me the depths, the buckets full of mercy that you've already given me. And Jesus, change my heart. So that even though I know that somebody's doing something wrong or immoral or uncomfortable for me, even though it, what, it isn't what I would do, even though it is not the right thing to do, even though any of that applies, I would, I would have the heart of Jesus for them instead of a heart of resentment and judgment. Oh God, I can't change my own heart. Only you can do that. So show me my own black heart and God do far more than that. Transform it. Holy Spirit, change me. As I come to communion and receive mercy again for the umpteenth time, Holy Spirit, change me. Transform me. Change my thinking. Change my heart. Change my behavior. Change the measure I use in meeting out judgment from the bucket to the thimble. And change the measure I use in meeting out mercy from the thimble to the bucket. And may your will be done.